This is the climax of competitive free riding. This is mental. That is with so much exposure. A huge backflip. Sick <laughs> A renowned challenge feared among athletes. A giant maze with no room for hesitation, no room for mistakes. Twenty-five editions of unforgettable free ride moments continue. This is Extreme Verbier 2021. For the grand final of the free ride world tour, we head to Switzerland. Verbier and the legendary Beg de Ross, which for the 25th time will host the Verbier Extreme. The idyllic alpine village is located in the canton of Valle in the southwest of Switzerland, and this well-renowned freeride resort includes some of the most impressive peaks in the Swiss Alps, including the spiritual home of the freeride world tour. Vectoros is very special because it is the pinnacle of big mountain competition. The venue doesn't get bigger than that, it doesn't get scarier, and very few people get to ride it every year, so that's like, it's our Hanenkam, it's the big one. Strong winds in the days before the competition meant the organizers had to lower the start. So this is the main start from the Petit Bec. So you can see the riders can slide here and go and choose their features. But most of all, you need to see the intimidating sight that you get from the top. All you see at the bottom, and I think this is the main thing of this face. There are a lot of blind rollers and it's really difficult to find your way. All right, let's do it. The snow is quite firm, but really not actually quite grippy. So these are all the features from the top, all the jumps that you can do. And basically we're gonna enter the main cooler of the face. So this is a no fall zone above it. So this is another part of the face which is completely of a blind roller. And which tells you that basically it's really hard to find your way. There are three zones in that face. So there is like the main central core, which is the classical core, then the whole left side of the face, which might be a bit more affected by the wind. And then there's the right part of the face, which is along the main break which is a bit more of an alpine face. All right, let's keep going. So you can see, this is a great wind leap. There's gonna be some tricks there. From here, we can see like the mandatory cliff that all the riders starting from start to are gonna be hitting. So you can see the finish line down there. Now all the technical and exposed features are gone. And from there on, you can let go and go and hit the last features down there. And this is it. Yeah, you could see like all the wavy snow is usually the, the healthy snow, the pretty soft one. As soon as it's not rough, it's basically much more compact. So the riders are gonna need to, to read a bit the different conditions, yeah. Up to the Alright, we got a happy lady crew here. Happy lady. The snowboard women were the first to be headed up to the start to drop in. So let's take a moment to catch up on the season so far. Located in the heart of the Pyrenees, Ordino Archelis and Dora kicked off the first two stops of the 2021 Freeride World Tour. Coming into the season as the three-time world champion, all eyes lay on Marion Herti. Despite the difficult snow conditions on both competition days, 
The French rider impressed the judges with her line choices, which were packed with technical features and drops. Winning both events, Marianne got her season off to the perfect start. In Fieberbrunn, Austria, Herte took the win again and made Freeride World Tour history as the first rider to win the overall title four times. I was really relaxed on the top of the mountain, really happy to be there, and, and now I'm for tennis world champ, guys. <laughs> it's crazy. US rider Erica Vikander and Canadian rookie Katie Anderson currently share the second place in the rankings. Vikander making it onto the podium at all three stops, while Anderson secured a third and second place finish in Andorra. The fourth and final rider to qualify for the Extreme Verbier 2021 is Austrian rider Manuela Mandel, who struggled in the second competition in Andorra, but managed to play second at her home competition in Fieberbrunn. With her fourth world title securely tucked into her belt, anyone would have forgiven Marion Haerty for taking her foot off the gas here in Verbier. But in search of a perfect four wins from four, Marion came onto the Bec de Ross fired up. That might have contributed to that uncharacteristic fall at the top of her run. But Marion, a true professional, bounced back, put that second drop in and started to settle down. This run would develop into something truly exceptional by anyone's standards. She worked her way down through the central couloir, some very steep terrain and out onto this cliff. Now, it may not look that big, but take a look now at the terrain she's over. The landing was do or die, a truly make or break moment. There was a compulsory cliff exit, which she stomped beautifully and then two hands down on the carve on the apron. Her fall at the top of this run would be the single blemish on an otherwise perfect season. Would it put a dampener on the close of her 2021 season? My run was not very really good on the top. And, you know, I'm a little bit tired in the end of the season. Um, but I was really happy to manage the middle of my run. I tried to go fast and big and the snow conditions are tricky. A score of 70 points flat for the other women to chase. I failed on the top. <laughs> Canadian Katie Anderson was next to drop. She came in to the Verbier Extreme in second place overall. She knew she couldn't take the win in the overall championship, but having seen Marion fall at the top of the face, could she take the win on the Bec de Ross? She started with this drop. She had to put it sideways to control the speed on landing, and that seemed to put her on edge. She took a more conservative line and less speed through the central section of the face. She didn't manage to get much air over the wind lip in the center, and then as she worked her way down into the one really exposed part of her line, she cut around that. It was a solid line from top to bottom, but it put in perspective just how much risk Marion had taken. I had a bunch of errors that I wanted to do, and then as I was riding down, the snow was pretty weird. It was kind of like punchy and grabby, and then like really firm in some spots. So I took out some errors, went for kind of more technical, just had fun, really. Just enjoyed my day here. <laughs> and the judges deemed Katie's run worth 65.33. There was just one rider left to drop, and if Marion Haerty was nervous, she had good reason to be. Erica Vikander isn't well known for her big freestyle tricks, but what she does excel at is immaculate technique and control in steep terrain, and that is exactly what the Beck de Ross offers. Could she do enough to take out Marion? She worked her way down onto one of the steepest areas of the face. You could see from the slough pouring over the cliffs just how steep that gradient is. She then made her way out onto the wind lip, a small amount of air and then drifted out into that open section of the apron where she managed to arc out some of her trademark turns. But again, without that exposure, 
it was going to be hard for the judges to find a reason to put her above Haiti. The top I thought it was pretty nice. The snow was like decent up there and I took a slightly different line than everybody else. So I'm pretty stoked on that. I got to a slightly more technical zone, if you will. And once you got kind of past that one choke, the snow is super hard, super wind affected. And it was, again, a pure survival mode. 61.67 confirms a perfect season for Marion Hayati. Four wins from four. Katie Anderson finishes her first season on the tour with yet another strong result, second for the rookie. But once again, taking the win, it's Marion Hayati. Oh, she's actually speechless. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Take it in, Marion. Marion, this is your moment to take it in. There are some cheers. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm emotional today. That's it. So the final standing see Anderson move ahead of Vikander into second, and the 2018 champion Manuela Mandel finishing in fourth. The champagne and the trophies belong to this woman, Marion Hayati. Now the ski women make their way to the start hut. For them, the title is still wide open. Oh, now we just have to hike for 30 minutes. Let's do this. While Hedvig hikes, let's take a look at their season so far. Overcoming the tricky snow conditions in Andorra, Hedvig Vessel kicked off her season with a huge backflip. Her fast and controlled run secured her victory. Hungry for a second win, Vessel took a fall right after dropping into the second competition. Nevertheless, she remains at the top of the rankings, having come second in Fieberbrunn. With her aggressive yet controlled style, rookie Juliette Villeman earned two second place finishes in Andorra and holds the second spot overall. Coming to Switzerland currently in third place is Polish rookie Zuzana Witek, who took her first ever win of the tour in Fieberbrunn. It was more, way more sketchy than I thought, and first place is just amazing. 2019's Verbier winner, Elizabeth Geritsen, currently holds fifth place in the overall rankings, right behind US rookie Tracy Chubb. Juliet Willman went all in on her run. Unfortunately, she crashed and injured herself. She still managed to ride down to the finish, but her title hopes were dashed. Fieberbrum winner Susanna Vitek had a solid run that allowed her to climb into the hot seat. Ariana Tricomi was gifted a wild card spot for the Extreme Verbier on the strength of her previous achievements. Three world titles, anyone? And of course, her intricate knowledge of the Petit Bec offers her a huge advantage over most of the women's field. She hadn't looked competition sharp in Fieberbrunn, but as she set about the cliffs here on the Bec de Ross, it looked like she might have regained her title winning form. Beautiful turn spraying slough all over the Petit Bec. That trademark Ariana Tricomi style led her down into this double, the same line that we'd seen Marion Hayati take in the women's snowboarding. Ariana looked absolutely at ease above this compulsory cliff. She boosted her way out, made short work of the bomb hole, and then arced out some big turns on the apron. She even threw in one of her trademark 360s at the bottom of the face and just held on to the landing. I'm super happy about my run. I had a lot of fun. It was a bit loose. Uh, snow conditions were definitely not easy, but it's such a great feeling to ski this mountain since we didn't uh, get to compete last year, so I'm super happy. Ciao, Papi. Ciao, Amici. 
the judges deemed it worthy of an 84.33. It was the hot spot for Tricomi. One of the few skiers without the nerves of the overall title. She was able to relax and enjoy the rest of the runs. Verbier local and extreme Verbier winner in 2019, Elizabeth Gerritsen came into this event in fifth place in the overall standings. There was an outside chance that she could take the title, but it required a lot of other results to go her way, so she was focused purely on her performance on the Beck. She came out swinging with a fast and committed line to the rider's right. Brimming with confidence, she sent this compulsory cliff. She then drew out a big turn to shut down speed and ensure that she was safe through the middle of the face in the variable snow. She then kicked hard into a turn to line up for her next feature. Easily the biggest cliff we'd seen in the women's category up to this point. It was then after burners on to the finish to wait for the score. Elizabeth's line control and technique, arguably the hardest criteria to master, were exceptional. I'm not going to lie, I had a bit of difficulties with the snow. It was very changing. It was not as smooth as uh, my run in 2019, but I did a similar line and I stomped all my airs. I'm happy. I, I did what I could with the conditions today. Her score of 88.33 left her speechless and yeah. moved the reigning world champion Ariana Tricomi nice. out of the hot seat. Hedvig Vessel was next to drop. And down at the bottom, Elizabeth Gerritsen was still trying to soak up exactly what she'd just achieved. What? Back up at the top, Hedvig Vessel dropping last had some big decisions to make. Sat in first, her closest rivals in Wilman and Vitek had fallen. So, should she go all in for the Verbier win and risk the title, or ski safe to secure the overall crown? Her pace and line choice up at the top suggested she was going all in. She attacked the exposed skiers left and showed confidence and control. She had two solid drops up at the top and exited that rock band with a beautiful transfer. Now she made her way into some of the steepest and most exposed terrain. Dealing with the slough, she moved even further left and cut through with a beautiful gap. The downside of that skier's left side of the face is that you find yourself on the apron with no features far quicker than the right-hand side. It meant that what had started as a very strong run lost its energy and petered out towards the end. Yes, yeah, so I skied on the Lucas right and I had three, four small hits. I was supposed to do a, a big lift, but uh, the snow was super tricky and I and I just wanted to stand on my feet, so I decided not to jump the cliff when I just arrived to it. Yes, girl. It would be a nervous wait for both Gerritsen and Wessel as the judges deliberated on that final score. Eventually, they came back with a 68.33, confirming Gerritsen as the champion in Verbier. Ariana Tricomi in second, Hedvig Wessel in third. In 2019, someone came up to me and told me, you know, a girl has never won twice on the Beck. And I was like, oh, that's an interesting fact. This is something that I want to try to do because uh, I think it's within my courts. So that was kind of the goal of the day, and I'm happy I reached it. 68.33 would put Hedvig on the podium in third, but in the overall title race, it would hand the Swiss Gerritsen her maiden world championship by a margin of just 20 points. It was a dream that Elizabeth herself thought was impossible at the start of the day, and as such, when she realised, it was an overwhelming moment.
So with two wins this season, Elizabeth Gerritsen takes the overall just 20 points ahead of the distraught Norwegian Hedvig Vessel. And a bitter pill for Juliet Willman, who drops off the podium for the first time into fourth. Okay, so Elizabeth just won the title with 20 points. That's like not... My first feeling was feeling a bit sad for her because she deserves it. She's uh, evolved the sport so much this past few years and I have so much respect for her. And it was always a goal of hers to become world champ. And uh, I actually told her this morning, I was like, it's yours, you got it. And um, so of course I'm very happy about it. I'm ha very happy about my performance, uh, but I can't help but uh, feel a bit sad for her because uh, she deserves it just as much as me. great example of the spirit that exists between the athletes on the Freeride World Tour and a humble champion in the shape of the Swiss, Elizabeth Gerritsen. You want a window? Okay, whatever, man. Next up is the snowboard men's category. Fucking sugar here. Yeah, it is. We go over, I'll see you later. Do you crash see it down? See you at the bottom. The 2021 men's snowboard field got shaken up by two young guns Blake Moller and Cody Bramwell. US rookie Blake Muller is currently leading the rankings after coming second in his debut run and winning the second competition in Andorra. Although he got caught up in the crusty snow of Fieberbrunn, Austria, he still managed to hold on to the golden bib. I was just really hopeful, but it's pretty insane that it came to life, so I'm super excited. But there's no time for complacency as two competitors are hot on Muller's heels. Winning the opening event and taking fourth in Fieberbrunn, British rider Cody Bramwell currently holds third place in the rankings. Whilst in second is 2019's Freeride World Tour champion, Victor De La Rue, with an impressive win in Fieberbrunn. I was like, I just go and try for the canyon. Feels good to finally put a run that I'm stoked about. Last year's tour champion, Niels Minnick, secured his golden ticket to Verbier in fourth place, alongside Camille Armand, and Sammy Lubke, who currently share fifth place in the overall rankings. Cody Bramwell is in his second year on tour, but has really announced himself this winter with a change in his approach. He's been riding to win, and the maths for the Brit in Verbier were very simple. If he could win, then he wins the world title. So he had to ride to win. And that is exactly what he did. A couple of snappy turns and then a hard right into the closeout shoot. He had an exposed drop at the top and then he committed to the compulsory cliff exit. He managed to control the speed and shut it down, heading left above a serious cliff band. Spinning off a cliff in heavy exposure is one of the things the judges absolutely love. It was followed by great control and another drop. This was developing into a very serious run. Finding a fresh track off the wind lip at the bottom, Cody chucked a laid out backflip to close out what was a very impressive descent. It worked out. It kind of had to change my line because I didn't get speed to this one hit I wanted to do. But I had a plan B if it didn't work out and I managed to stay on my feet to the end. So, yeah, I'm pretty damn happy. Like, I think I'm on the podium now, last one. And, yeah, I couldn't ask for more. I'm actually baffled. I worked this well. Fast, technical line sprinkled with some flair. The judges rewarded Cody with a huge 89.67. 89, bro. It would take something very special to best it. If Blake Moller was feeling any pressure dropping into the Beck de Ross for the first time, and bidding to win the Freeride World Tour title. It didn't show. 
In fact, popping out of the gate, it looked like he couldn't wait to get stuck in. He headed straight to some of the steepest and most exposed terrain. A lovely frontside air kicked things off. But as he headed down the center of the big chute, he seemed to be burning both features and vertical. But as is most often the case with Moller, he was getting set up for something big. A 360, which he landed seamlessly into a heel side turn. He managed to control his speed before releasing the hounds and sending the exit cliff from the upper deck. It was a beautiful combo. He finished it with a floaty Indy over the hip that nearly caught the second landing transition. Yeah, I mean, I kind of like hit the hits I wanted to. I kind of want to just point it through that back three double zone and then maybe should have backed this wind lift down here, but we learned. <laughs> Freaking amazing season though. Glad I came. It would be a nervous wait, but 82 would see Blake slot into second and Cody Bramwell survive one serious challenge. The second would come in the shape of this man, Victor Delarue. He's so solid and precise on a board, regardless of snow quality. And this would unquestionably be the rider that Bramwell would expect to best his score. Victor struck out to the rider's left and immediately put himself on top of a double, which he dropped without hesitation. That commitment, though, meant he was clocking light speed on the run out and he had to get it under control. Sensing this was his moment, Victor let it run and found a new cross-court line and threw a high-speed three into the same exposed pocket as Blake, but rather than attempt to shut it down, Victor embraced the mayhem and sent the cliff. This was all full line. All the features came out so quick. It was pretty steep, it was pretty compact snow, so it really came quick, but I pretty much stomp everything just on my 360 did a little slap after kind of, but uh, yeah, I rode fast, I did a nice three, so really happy about this. Wizard-like board control and full commitment were rewarded with a 92.67. Victory for Victor Delarue on the Beck de Ross. So Blake Moller in third, Cody Bramwell in second, and Victor Delarue takes his first ever win on the Beck de Ross. Yeah, when you see the score coming and you see uh, 92, I think, and uh, yeah, first place, and that means winning Verbier, which is insane, and winning the Freire World Tour. So it's really, really awesome and insane. And I really didn't expect this to happen this year, especially after the really bad beginning of season I've done. To win in Verbier, like, it's really a big thing. So Cody Bramwell in third, the rookie Blake Moller, a dream season to finish in second. The Frenchman, Victor Delarue, makes it two free ride world tour titles. He's catching up with his older brother, Xavier, slowly. Now it's time for the final category. The ski men are taking off. Freeride World Tour icons like Rene Barkard and Christopher Turdle had to be on their guard this season as the rookies came in hot. Making his debut in Andorra, US rider Ross Tester unleashed a deep bag of tricks to claim the podium's top spot. Tester came up short on a backflip during the second competition day in Andorra, but he managed to repeat his debut success with another win in Fieberbrunn. 
This secured him first place in the overall rankings. I don't like wearing the golden bib because I think it's bad luck. I'm stoked to get on the back. I've always wanted to ski it. Another rookie to keep tabs on is French rider Maël Olivier, who currently occupies fourth place in the overall rankings with a second and fourth place finish in Andorra. But the consistency and experience of previous champs is not to be underestimated. After Turtle struggled in the first competition of the season, he delivered his solid and controlled riding style in the following two events and made it onto the podium at both. The same applies to René Barkard, who took third place in the second comp in Andorra and, undeterred by the crusty snow conditions in Fieberbrunn, he took second place. Currently, the two veterans share the second spot in the overall rankings, with Maël Olivier, Andrew Pollard and Karl Regner Eriksson hot on their heels. A massive 720 off a cliff gave Blake Marshall the highest score so far and put him in the hot seat. In an era when freestyle is almost mandatory in free riding, Imar Navarro is a stubborn defender of big mountain values. His commitment to the biggest and fastest lines has earned him galaxies of respect from the core of the sport. But he's struggled to apply his style to competition, which is why he's never had the opportunity to ski the Beck de Ross in competition before. Until now. The Beck always offers skiers like Imar the chance to shine, though, and that is exactly what he did. The Spaniard lined up two of the biggest cliffs in the venue. And then sent them both as a double. It was truly unthinkable and blew everyone's mind. The double in the top part is so steep, uh, so technical, it's no fall zone. And yeah, the snow was not so, so good. It's a little bit crusty. And when I landed the first one, uh, I take too much speed. <laughs> and I have another one, and I landed perfect uh, the second one, and I take a straight line for the, for the finish. This line meant business, 86.33. Imar would be making himself at home in the hot seat. Mayel Olivier was still in title contention, but a knee injury and a crash ended his overall title hopes in Verbier. Drew Tabke's style is matched only by his grace, and once again, he bagged one of the best lines of the day, dancing a three-punch combo that Muhammad Ali would have been proud of. The first of the big mountain Swedish Mafia to drop was Karl Regner Eriksson. This huge flat three put him in second behind Navarro. The next Swede to drop was Christopher Turdell, world champion in 2018. He's won at almost every stop on the tour at some stage in his career, except Verbier. Next one, Christopher Turdell, three, two, one. Christopher opened straight off the bat with a beautiful swooping drop where he changed edges in the air and then he tucked underneath that cliff band and set his path down the fall line. Another drop. He started to flatter the snow conditions with some incredibly smooth skiing. Another drop and then just as we were getting lulled into a false sense of security, he threw a left turn into a pocket of snow above a truly monstrous cliff. The landing was lighter than air for the sweep. He skipped down to the wind lip for a backflip to cap a run that would only compound the judge's misery. His line and control were standout judging criteria, but in fairness, they were all peaking. I'm <laughs> You're sick, I saw Good line. job, good job, good that run, was bro. Crazy. Oh, good run, man. So happy for you. I'm happy that I was 
able to include a little bit of technical small turns with big drop and a back flip on the end. Uh, so I'm happy to manage to land a line that included a little bit of everything. Right now I'm relaxing, but... Such a relief to be down here. Now. A 90.67. Yeah. It would unseat yeah. Imar and put Turdell one step closer to that elusive Verbier victory. Oh, good to be back. Yeah. Come on, Rainer. There were only three riders left at the top, two of them title contenders. So, how was Turdell feeling? Ah. Uh. You know, I dream about this. Last night, this morning, you never know. Such a relief, I couldn't be happier. And we just want to watch Rainer. Freeride legend Rainer Barkrid was on his way to deliver the best run of the day, taking Navarro's double cleaner, and dare I say it, even a little bigger. Then he went to put the icing on the cake with his go-to. Two sevenths and a nineteenth in the overall meant Vardek Gorek was not going to trouble the title. But the Frenchman has won here before in 2019. Cutting around Turdell's cliff, Vardek headed straight to the double and sent it bigger than anyone. Then, like a heat seeking missile, he honed in on that central wind lip. But instead of sending his traditional backflip, he treated everyone to a huge right 360. Very nearly got hung up cutting back, but held on and honed in on the final cliff. This time it was a backflip, big and clean. Vardek knew the hard work was done and Turdell looked nervous. Another backflip, and no doubt the Frenchman had given the judges something to chew on. My run was amazing. It's my first 360 in competition on Freeride World Tour. My choice was to ski fast and try to to do uh, three tricks, uh, one 360 and two backflip, and uh, I did it. 88 points for Vardek and second place with one rider left to drop. At this moment, Freeride World Tour rookie Ross Tester had his dreams at his fingertips. Yeah, there's only Ross Tester left. He's got it in him. It's his to win and to lose, so... Leading the Freeride World Tour and was dropping into the Bec de Ross as the last rider of the day. Could he control the adrenaline and do the unthinkable? Win the Extreme Verbier and in the process take the world title. He started the line in exactly the same way as Turdell and then headed for the Windlip, where undoubtedly he would put his freestyle repertoire to work. There was no question at all that this straight air was a mistake. On a face this short, Ross knew he had to make every single piece of terrain pay with the judges, and this miss hit was a huge blow to Ross's hopes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seemingly unfazed, Ross headed out to the far right of the venue to the huge diving board and through a massive 15-metre backflip. Turdell knew it was special. Maybe not the line he meant to do, but despite that, it was still very, very impressive. That's not the line I meant to do. Jesus Christ, that backflip. Oh, What the hell? Come on. Uh, my run was all right. It was nothing that I really planned to do. Um, I looked at the face and saw all the features and I watched all the riders go. And I, I ended up just skiing right past all my features and I saw where uh, Leo did a big backflip. So I said, eh, maybe I'll just do that. That was pretty sick. And um, yeah, I ended up stomping it. So stoked on that. 
It would be nice to hear what they're talking about. Well, like, I just this yes, it would. They're talking about an 85.67, which would see the rookie finish just off the podium in fourth. Four, 85. And confirm Christopher Turdell as the 2021 Freeride World Tour Champion. Unbelievable. 2019 winner Vardek Gorak is in second. I'm on Navarro in third, but on the top step for the first time in Verbier, Christopher Turdell. To win here in Verbier, both the Extreme Verbier and the overall Freeride World Tour, it's uh, it, it really can't get any better than that. So in the overall, René Barkrid slips to fifth, while Karl Regner Eriksson moves up to third. Christopher Turdell makes it two world titles. And the man finally getting the monkey off his back. His first extreme fabulous oh, win. Give it up for Christopher Turdell! Now it's time to say goodbye from the 25th anniversary of the Verbier Extreme. Despite all the factors against it in 2021, the Freeride World Tour has delivered yet another year of spectacular and safe competition. Join us again in 2022.